Today is uh, the 9th of November, 2016. We are at the New York State Military Museum in Saratoga Springs, New York. Uh, my name is Wayne Clark. I'm the interviewer. Sir, for the record, would you please state your full name and your date and place of birth, please? Thomas J. Farnan, born in Glens Falls, New York, October 13, 1930. And uh, did you attend school there? No. I attended school of May, firstly in uh, Mechanicville, New York. Okay, you lived in Mechanicville? Yes. Okay, and uh, did you graduate from high school there? I did, but we moved out in the country in between. I went to country schools for two or three years, and then I went back to Mechanicville to seventh grade and graduated from there in 1947. Okay, and uh, once you graduated from high school, did you go on to college at that point? Yes, I did. I went to RPI for a year, and then to Siena College for two years. Mm -hmm. and, and then at, after your two years, I understand you went into the military? Yeah, I enlisted in the United States Air Force. Okay. Now, why did you pick the Air Force? I always was interested in flying, and mm -hmm. I had a couple years of college. Mm -hmm. I thought I might develop into a pilot or something. Mm -hmm. Now, did you, uh, have you received your draft notice at all? I forget. Okay. All right. Now, where did you go uh, for your training? I went to Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. Now, was that your first time away from home? For an extended uh, yes, period? Yes, yes, except for vacations and stuff. Okay. And what was that like? Well, it was very busy because a lot of people had joined this Air Force then. Mm -hmm. You know the date, December 1950, it's right after the Chinese entered the war mm -hmm. and was shoving us back over in Korea. Mm -hmm. Now, when you uh, went into the Air Force, did they tell you in basic uh, that you would probably end up in Korea? No. No? As a matter of fact, I spent 11 days in basic training and they sent me over to the hospital because of the influx of troops there and the weather. Everybody was getting sick and they were out in tents. Oh. They also didn't have proper uniforms. They were training in civilian clothes. It was a very cold winter and they stopped, put me in the uh, hospital for an emergency, on an emergency basis to help them out. Okay. Now, after after your basic, did they send you on to an advanced school? No, that, uh, 11 days later they sent me to the hospital and I fought my neck off trying to get into a school and uh, I never was successful to get to a school at that time. All right. Now, how much time did you spend in the States before you ended up in Korea? I was, I went to Korea in uh, February of uh, 52. Oh, 52. All right. So for the first, for the first two years you were in the, the Air Force, did you stay in Lackland? It was February 52. It was almost just one year. Oh, okay. Yes, I did. I stayed at the hospital. All right. And I was fighting to get uh, into a school. They said I, I took the, court, the uh, aptitude tests. And I was put in the medics for a year, for uh, after 11 days. Mm -hmm. And I was always after him to get, get me to a school. And finally I found out that I hadn't gone to the firing range and I needed to do that before I got into the school. Okay. So I, nobody was paying attention. I was lost on the, in the medics, you know. Mm -hmm. Even though I liked the job. Now don't get me wrong, you know. Mm -hmm. It was a good job, 24 hours, or. Uh, Eight hours a day, five days a week. Oh, and weekends off. Fine, yeah. <laughs> well, it we'll depend upon your schedule. Yeah. Now. You got time off, two days off. Mm -hmm. And I uh, finally got to fire range and qualified. And then they forgot me again. They weren't, I kept after, when are you going to send me to a school? It's just like I got lost over there. See? Yeah. I got interested in, uh, I got a lot of mail. They told me in the post office at the hospital, I probably got more mail than anybody there, a worker there. Oh. So pretty soon they gave me a job there. I, they had a vacancy and I got in as a postal employee. 
At the hospital. At the hospital, which was pretty big because it was a big hospital. Mm -hmm. Plus, they had uh, they brought in injured people to their the hospital from the war. Yeah. I can't think what they call it now, but they would bring them in and look them over and help them out, and then send them to a hospital and hopefully near their home, you know, yeah. wherever they had to go to whatever the trouble was with them. So. There was people coming in and out on these airplanes, air, air evacuation of injured deaths, they call it, something like that. They mm -hmm. flew into Kelly Air Force Base, which was nearby. They brought them up to Lacken and treated them until they could go to some other mm -hmm. hospital. And I don't know if they were just Air Force guys or all, but we had, as far as the postal work, there was a lot of postal work. When you got people in the hospital, whether they're trainees or these people who are injured overseas, mm -hmm. they get a lot of mail, as you might realize. Sure. And it's tough to keep track of them. Sure, I can imagine. But it was a very interesting job. Mm -hmm. uh, I liked it very much. Now, what did you do uh, on your time off? What? Well, I um, went downtown to San Antonio, which was a nice city. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's the Alamo there, and there's nice parks. Yeah. Churches, there's uh, the River Walk, yeah. which was out, which was off base to uh, military personnel at the time. Now it's a really big tourist destination for people to go to the River Walk in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Now, did you get a pair of cowboy boots there? No, <laughs> I wasn't into that. I learned a little bit more about, about Western music and stuff uh -huh. like that. Okay. And I used to go up to New Bronzefield to a park up there. I used to go up to uh, Austin to see college football games. Wow. I hitchhiked up, I don't know how many, six, 60 miles or so, and at least two occasions. And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I ate a lot of Mexican food. I had some uh -huh. friends that liked to eat Mexican food. And, <laughs> and we played a lot of games. and. You know, between barracks and uh, pitched horseshoes, and yeah. and I kept busy, pretty busy there. Mm -hmm. And then you got uh, your orders for Korea in February of '52. Well, first of all, our air, our postal supervisor told us in about December of '51 that we had the wrong job numbers. The AFSC numbers, they call it, and the mm -hmm. Air Force, and there he was going to change those. And I don't know what the wrong one was or anything, see, but he just, and what happened is, when I got notice to go overseas, and I got over there, they had me down as a clerk typist. So I went into the base overseas, and he says, you're our new clerk typist. That's what I found my wrong AFSC number was. Oh. Uh -huh. And I, I take it you knew how to type from college? No, I didn't know how to type. Oh, you I didn't? I didn't know anything about clerk typists. Oh. But that's the number they gave us at Lackland, and it's, they gave us the wrong number, which the officer admitted, and I thought he got it changed. And when he told me that I was going overseas, I didn't say to him under what number. I just said, I'm glad to get out of Texas and uh -huh. to go in the Far East. That's what he said I was going in. So I was kind of happy about the whole thing, and uh, okay. I didn't realize that the number didn't get changed in time, you see. Now, how did you get over to Korea? We went over on a ship out of California there, Kent Stone, California. Okay. How long did the trip take? Well, it took a long time, probably 10 days, I think. Did, it? did you get seasick at all? Nope. I went to the railing a couple of times. Uh-huh. And the problem was, was that we went north. We went from Stoneham North to Seattle and picked up 2,000 Army guys, and that's when you get sick when you're on the shore, you know. Oh, okay. And then when they get on, they all got sick, so oh. <laughs> I was just lucky that I didn't get sick. How was the food aboard ship? I thought it was pretty good. They fed us twice a day. Uh -huh. Now, when you got to Korea, whereabouts did you land? We landed at Yokohama. Oh, in Japan first. Yeah, and they took a train. They took a train down to Izuki Air Force Base, which is near Fukuoka, Japan, on the lowest main island. Okay. 
And uh, that was quite a trip because it was an overnight trip, and during and when it got to be evening, they just folded the, the seats into beds somehow, oh. and gave us some sort of light mattress, and we slept right where we were sitting during the daytime. It was really we wondered where we were going to sleep that night, huh. and so I got there and went in, and they told me it was. That was their new clerk typist, and I said, I can't type my own name in five minutes. So they said, well, we don't need any postal employees here. So this was a rear base for a, fight, a fighting unit in Korea. Mm -hmm. And um, they, uh, they called Korea there, where their main base was, the main people, and wanted if they had any jobs for me over there in the postal work or what. I think because I had a couple of years of college, they uh, took me. Uh, they asked me if I was interested in information education specialist, mm -hmm. and explained it to me. It sounded good, and I took it and loved it the rest of my career. Now, what what did that job entail? Two parts. One was the information. Is we I used to go to meetings about the what happened yesterday with all the planes that were bombing North Korea. Mm -hmm. And they told us what they wanted the troops to know, and we got it out to the troops. Mm -hmm. And uh, then also we had a base newspaper there for information purposes, and we each troop had to take a, once a week, go to an hour information hour. And that's what it was all gated to, telling them what was going on. Mm -hmm. The newspaper helped an awful lot. The second part was the education part of it. And we uh, had the United States Armed Forces Institute oh, yes. correspondence courses yep. that we uh, administered. Mm -hmm. Their guy took courses and then they take their final exam in our office under our, you know, one of us had to watch the minister okay. exam. So, the, the, so the, what was the name of the base you were on? Tegu, K2 Tegu Air Force Base. And uh, did, were there any flights in and out of there? Was we, we flew from, it came from Izuki over C-47s every day, okay. two or three of them a day, couriers they call them. Okay. And what what major city were you near? Taegu. That, that was the name of the, the city? It's a pretty big city. Okay. It's a city that didn't get captured when the war started. Mm -hmm. They call it the Pusan Peninsula. Okay. Taegu was in the north part of it, and it was stayed with America until we got our troops together and everything and drove back on them, you know. Mm -hmm. One of the other things in education is the GED test. The guys could take GED tests. Yeah. They didn't finish high school. And then if they, we used to give them a pretest, and if they needed further education, we taught courses at night along with the correspondence courses. I see. And uh, to help them to pass the GED test. Mm -hmm. Also, the University of California conducted classes on our base all the time. There was always a college course going on, hmm. and people could sign up for that, and if they were qualified, they could join it. The mm -hmm. government paid three quarters of the payment for it. Oh. Now, did you take any additional yes, courses I did. yourself? I took six hours of history while I was there. And I was in the administration of the program, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did squeeze in six hours there, and then I took two hours at Boston College later in my career. Now, the instructors there with the college courses, were they military people? No, or they were civilians from working for the University of California. They come in once a week mm -hmm. for six weeks or so, or three hours a night. <clears throat> Then the next day they go to some other base and teach maybe the same course. There was, I see. It was a history professor and he, went, he was teaching history all the time in Korea. And next time it might have been public speaking was one of them. Physics was another one they mm. taught. Now were these classes pretty well attended? Yes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people bit off a little bit too much, like physics. Oh, I can imagine. And, and, and the failure weight wasn't too good. But mm. History was pretty good, you know. Everybody's mm -hmm. interested in history. Sure. So it was it was uh, nice to 
enjoy it. I enjoyed it very much. And I used to make extra money administering your GED tests and give you, and administering the correspondence course final exams. And so that and I went to the movies every night, every time I could get a chance. And mm -hmm. used to have movies every night. Did you have much interaction with uh, the civilian population at all? No, the only interaction we had is our secretary was a civilian. Mm -hmm. And uh, we called it our illustrator. In the i &E office, we did a lot of advertising for our courses. Mm -hmm. And he used to have, make pictures and put, place mm -hmm. them all over the base. Mm -hmm. We had two wings there, two Air Force wings. With six, each had three squadrons of F-84 fighter bombers. So that's what we were there to support those. Mm -hmm. And the uh, war was sort of winding down then. And the commanding officer w was really adamant in getting people to do things like take courses, you know. Mm -hmm. Sure. And anybody that wanted to suggest a course, if we could find a teacher, we could arrange for it. Yeah. Like we had courses in uh, photography, English, mathematics, which I taught, social studies, cooking, I mean, everything. You could, we found a cook who would teach a course. We arranged for the course, and the guys had a great time, you know. Yeah. Hmm. Now, how much time did you actually spend in Korea? It was just about the one year. Okay. And when when were you sent back to the States? It was about a year later, about, I got back here in just about February or March of 53. Uh, okay. And when you uh, got back, let's see, you got back in March of 53, and uh, you were, let's see, you were discharged December of 54. Where were you during the... I got, we had a choice over in Korea, halfway through what sector we'd like to go into when we came back home. Mm -hmm. I, being living in upstate New York, I selected the mid-Atlantic states and New England states, and I got New England states. I was assigned to the Air Force Cambridge Research Center in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Oh. And they're building a base at Hanscom Field, which is near there, and mm -hmm. uh, it hadn't been built yet. So. When I got here, I was assigned to bunk in the YMCA in Cambridge. Oh. And the first day I went in to work, they said, here's our new clerk typist. My ding darn job number oh. kept following me. And did you tell them you couldn't type? Yeah, I said I couldn't type. I said, what the heck's going on here? I said, you know. But the Mr. Finn was the civilian in charge of our department. And he squeezed me in as an INE specialist. Now, what is this, INE? The same thing. Like okay. Information education. Oh, okay. Yep. Excuse me. And he arranged for me to go to the school for it. Oh. This is two years or so later. So you finally got a school. Imagine huh? that. <laughs> went to Port Slocum, New York, which is a base in the Long <laughs> Island Sound. Mm -hmm. We used to have to go to New Rochelle and get a ferry boat to New to uh, Port Slocum in New York. Mm -hmm. And you know who was there many years ago when he was a recruit? My father. Really? I got a picture of him and it says Tim, Tom Farnan, Tim Farnan, Port Slocum, New York. And I end up in the same place. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, how long was that school? It was like six to eight weeks, something like that. Yeah. You must have had a a leg up on everyone, being that you. Uh... I had it. You know, it was a, it was a great school, but I felt very confident. There. Uh huh. Uh, it was nice. Okay, so once you completed that school, you went back to Cambridge. Yeah, and eventually I went out to the new base was built. Mm -hmm. We went out. We were the first ones to locate out there our office, and we went to work in the parachute shop. Oh. They, they give us the corner of the parachute shop, you know. Okay. And uh, then they put us, first of all, they put us in a house that had just been vacated because, you know, the government bought the house. Uh-huh. And we had around 12 guys in the house. They usually had four or five, and we immediately overtaxed the sewer system. 
<laughs> you can imagine that. It was fun. But so I was in Hanscom Field. In the meantime, right after school, I got married. My oh. girlfriend back home. From back, back, back here? Back here, yeah. And yep. uh, we moved to an apartment in Cambridge, New York, or Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And I uh, had a great time in Boston. Now, did uh, while well, you were in the service, did she get a job too, or? No. Nope. No. She she was uh, she worked she she was, went to business college and she didn't go to work over there and there was it was. Uh, okay. And then later, our first child was born there. But while you were still in the service. Yeah, just before I got out of service. Oh. And that girl was born in the Murphy Army General Hospital, which was one of the two military places that we could go for mm -hmm. the hospital for doctor medical purposes. Okay. And uh, your your job was basically you were doing the same same sort of work yes. you were doing in Korea. Yes. Okay. And uh, I wanted to say it's, oh I. Had some, some funny experiences in the service. One was when I got I was in a marching in a parade in Patriot's Day in downtown Boston one year. And mm -hmm. The uh, head sergeant turned me in because my uniform was too tight. <laughs> so uh, here it is, April, you know, and I get out in the service in uh, December. And so I went to the sergeant major, whoever it was, and. And he says, well, you get out. And he says, um, I said, I'll lose weight if I can, but I don't even wear this class A uniform hardly any. Mm -hmm. You know, we wear it in parades, that's all. Yeah. So he let me off, it was funny. Mm. And then he, then lo and behold, in October, I went up for promotion. And he says, well, you're getting out in December, aren't you? And I says, well, not if I get promoted. My wife and I have been thinking about maybe staying in because we, you can take your family with you a lot of time yep. for staff sergeant, you know. Yep. So I got to I got the staff sergeant's job, and then I had to make up my mind whether to get out of service or not, and uh, and uh, we uh, decided to get out of the service. Where I I would imagine the Air Force was disappointed you didn't reenlist. I don't know. I tell you the truth. The, Sergeant Major during World War II, one of his jobs was guarding the Iron Bridge in Mechanicville. Oh, you're kidding. And that was just such a coincidence. Maybe that helped me in getting what he gave me, you know. Huh. He was nice to me. And uh, I can remember the tr going by in the school bus and the troops were up on the bridge marketing used to, during World War II, see, marketing. That was a key bridge. So they had to guard that against a, sabotage? They, or? Yeah, they were uh, really? stationed in uh, uh, one of the, the, the army base in Schenectady, which was uh, for supplies, you know. Yeah. A depot, they called it, and they truck, brought them over there every day. They had a building to keep warm, and then they direct marched across the bridge back and forth 24 hours a day. Huh. Now, did they... Did, well, you probably don't know. Did they have to stop the cars or the school buses to, no, to cross? No, this was a bridge. It okay. went across the river and also across the highway. Okay. We used to drive and go under them, you know? Yeah. And they cold weather, geez, those poor guys are out there. Mm. 20 below zero that we used to have more than we get now. And uh, and uh, they uh, that, that was good duty for him, you know, because he wasn't over getting shot at. So. Sure, yeah. But the B&M Railroad was big, and McCabe had a large railroad yard. Yes. And the B&M came over and uh, went back all the time bringing supplies. See, the Scotia had a depot. Oh, I see. Okay. Rotterdam had a big depot. Yep. Very important link in their system. Uh, okay. And, yep, that makes sense. But that, that's kind of a side of the thing, but it was interesting. Mm. So we went, we came back and I finished college. And uh, I was on the GI Bill, of course, yeah. and helped, and we even got extra money because we were married and had a family. Mm -hmm. We had an apartment in Stillwater, New York, where our hometown. Then I worked a number of jobs while I was trying to finish college. Mm -hmm. At the college, I worked, of 
quite a lot of two or three jobs, and my father used to get me on the farm. And now, now, what year did you uh, end up graduating? 1956, I graduated. Okay. And BS in physics. And you mentioned you went to, you went to work for Niagara Mohawk. Yeah, I got a chance to teach in Scarlettville. I got a chance to work in the power of the paper company in Mechanicville and the GE, but I took the uh, power company job. It was probably a good choice. <laughs> well, I don't know, you know, they're better in teaching, but uh, uh -huh. my father had work, his, was working with the power company. He was a machinist in North Albany. I went on a, a, edu or a training program. Mm -hmm. People, they put brought people up from the ranks and also from the colleges. Mm -hmm. And I went on a three-year training program. Can you believe that? But the three years, a lot of it was taking people's placement on vacation, uh -huh. stuff, and then, but you learned to work, you know, and then I ended up getting my first job, regular job up in Gloversville. I didn't even know where Gloversville was. Oh, sure, was. sure. Now, what did you do up, up in Gloversville? Well, I was a general line foreman, they call it. I was in charge of a bunch of linemen, mm -hmm. crews. Okay. And uh, had to set up their jobs for them and visit their jobs and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I was there just a year because they told me I'd be there about a year. Then I went to Cobleskill for four years as a superintendent of the electric lines. Yeah. And Cobleskill was a very nice place to work. Yep, college town. Then I was there four years, then I went back to Gloversville as superintendent of electric operations up there and stayed there 20 years. Mm -hmm. Then eventually I ended up um, in Syracuse for about six years mm -hmm. and retired from out there. Okay. What year did you retire? In 90. Uh, 90, okay. So yeah. I've been retired 25 or 26 years. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, I, I, I did uh, want to ask you, I, I kind of forgot. When you were in the service, did you... Uh, Especially over in Korea, did you get to see any USO shows or anything like that? Yes. The people I remember seeing was Eddie Fisher, mm -hmm. Cardinal Spellman, and Rory Calhoun. Really? Are the ones I remember uh -huh. seeing. I even told Eddie Fisher, you're the closest I ever got to Elizabeth Taylor in my life. <laughs> what did he say to he that? He you know. <laughs> then Cardinal Spellman come over in a cold, cold, cold day. And uh, what they did is they cleared a uh, place out in the airport where they brought planes inside, you know, and yep. run a bunch of heaters and brought us all in there standing up. And we were freezing. Of course, it, when he went to talk, he had to shut off the heaters. Oh, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't hear him, but it, it was uh, interesting. Hmm. And I had a lot of fun over there, but I did have some problems. That are worth mentioning, I think, here is that I was trying to get movies downtown to inform the troops, you know. So there's all kinds of movies, military movies you can get at this place, the mm -hmm. Army place. One was Hill Number no. One, was the name of the movie. And I thought it probably had to do with the hills in Korea, you know. Mm -hmm. There was this battle with Hill Number no. This and the, so I brought the movie out to show the troops, and it, it was turned out, I didn't review it, but I went to the first showing, it was about Calvary, oh. which, which was a religious movie. Oh, I see. So you, you know what happened, don't you? By the time I got back to the office, I got the head chaplain in Korea had called and said, what are you doing showing, showing religious movies to the troops, you know? You shouldn't do that, so. Oh, really? Well, you shouldn't show a Catholic movie to the troops, you know. Okay. So I told him that I made a mistake and I uh, mm -hmm. didn't review it and it would never happen again. That's the last I heard of it. Mm -hmm. Another thing, when we had a new base newspaper there, they had a contest to name the base newspaper. Everybody in the base could submit as many names they wanted to name this base newspaper. So I sent in 20 names myself the idea was the top two names would go that the committee picked, NCO committee, you know, picked it, would go to the commander and he picked one of them to be the, and one of the two names he sent to him was mine. 
but he didn't like either one of them. Yeah. <laughs> which is like the army way or that. <laughs> so he picked another name, and the guy who won the contest was get a free R and R to Japan. Uh huh. But uh, we had 60, 261 names submitted. Wow. You can imagine the names that are moving over there, oh, like sure. the Rice Paddy Gazette, and uh -huh. the Kimchi Courier. It was terrible. <laughs> there were good names too. Yeah. Profound names, but they're funny names. Yeah. Hmm. And one time, another incident, I took an R and R to Japan. It was on the Japanese Sea for three or four days, and I flew back. When I went back to fly back. Eisenhower was coming over at, right after he got elected president mm -hmm. to make a visit to Korea, you know. There no play no planes could go in the air while Eisenhower was in the air. So I sat yeah. around to around eight ten o'clock at night and I said, Can't you give me a room here and let me go back tomorrow? No, you got there's a plane going out of here tonight at eleven o'clock. Mm -hmm. It was raining and windy and I got one of these C-46s, which I didn't like very much. I got a lot of bad news about it. Yeah. And I had to fly back in that. They wouldn't put me up, but uh, it was interesting him, having mm. Eisenhower over there and everything, and me affected, you know. Mm. Then one other time I went to Tokyo to an R&R &R where my first cousin was big head chef. Oh. And uh, she took care of me very nicely in Tokyo. Now, now was she uh, was she military too? She was U.S. Air Force, yeah. Ah. Huh. So we had a lot of nice incidents. Sure. It was, my career was a little bit topsy turvy with the job number, of business, and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And getting stuck, getting put in the medics for after eleven days of basics, and but it ended up it started doing better when I got over to Korea, and it was. The last two years were very nice. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, how do you think your time in the service changed or affected your life? Well, you know, while I was over there, I taught courses, you know, for one thing, and I decided I might want to be a teacher when I came mm -hmm. back. And, I, and part of my last two years or a year and a half at CN, I took some education courses, but then when I had a chance to teach, I didn't do it because I liked the power company job better, mm -hmm. you know. I think it settled me down. I know it did because when I went back to Siena, after being in service, I got all great marks. Yeah. And I was married with a child and settled down. Yes. And uh, my marks went from C's to A's and B's. Oh. <laughs> now, did you, did you uh, stay in contact with anyone you were in the service with? Um, one one guy I did very close contact. Mm -hmm. He was the guy I knew in um, in uh, Cambridge, and he used to be he lived locally, and he used to have a base basketball team and a softball team. And I played on both of them. Huh? We played colleges and basketball. And we won our um, base championship in softball with him. So. And we correspond every Christmas. Mm -hmm. And two years ago, I went to visit him after 60 some years. And yeah. he was on Cape Cod and had a great time. Mm -hmm. You can imagine that. Now, did he look? Did he look the same or he totally? He looked the same. I don't know how I looked. <laughs> we tried one thing that I wish they didn't try while we were there. We went to visit an air show and I had a B-17. I decided to walk through it. Uh huh. That was very hard because I'm so big, and and I I, I scraped my legs and everything. That uh -huh. it was terrible. You almost had to crawl through it. See? Yeah. So I I said I don't know how I'm going to go any further. He says we well, got it. We got to get out of this thing. <laughs> Fortunately, another guy was having trouble behind me, so nobody was pushing us. You know. Uh -huh. Then I tried to get down the ladder off to B17. That was somebody had to almost catch me. I'm going to try that again. Yeah. Um, did you join any veterans organizations like the VFW? Or oh, I belong to the Korean War Veterans <clears throat> Organization here and locally. Okay. Which is a very active organization. We have meetings once a week, month. We have lunches once a month. 
we parade. Mm -hmm. I now ride. I don't march anymore. Uh -huh. And they're very active in the community. Community. They go around to schools, explain the Korean War to them. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, is uh, in closing, is there anything uh, we missed that you'd like to touch on or add to the interview? Well, I, I guess I covered most of it. I just don't know why when I got in, in uh, Texas, uh, the medics that I they couldn't straighten me out and send me to a school. But I don't think I tried hard enough because. I enjoyed the job I was doing, you know, it was hard yeah. to, but it, 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 and, and I never thought they'd send me anywhere as well out of school. Huh. They sent me to the Far East, and, uh, and, and it ended up, everything ended up pretty good once I got there. Okay. All right, well, thank you so much for your interview. Okay.